According to a new report commissioned by the Energy Market Authority, Singapore's power sector can bring down its emissions to net zero by 2050, a realistic target that doesn't compromise energy security and affordability. The power sector now produces 40% of total emissions here, and that percentage is only likely to rise in the coming years. And so, the report recommends several strategies to reach this net zero aim, including developing multi-layered grids that allow for different sources of energy like solar panels. This, as, this is as opposed to Singapore's current single-layered grid, where electricity pr produced by generation companies flow into the national grid that households and businesses draw on. The report also charts out three potential pathways on the way to net zero. In the most optimistic scenario, energy and digital technologies develop rapidly and are complemented by strong global cooperation. And as you can see here, they'll help Singapore achieve a diverse energy supply mix in 2050 with the ability to import energy from many countries and use low carbon hydrogen as a key energy source. Let's find out more from Assistant News Editor Audrey Tan. Audrey, out of the three scenarios outlined in the report, there's the most op optimistic one which we just covered. Uh, can you briefly elaborate on the other two scenarios and explain why it's important for Singapore to have more than one approach? Hi, Yan. Yeah, so the three different scenarios outlined in the latest report are meant to account for uncertainties in geopolitical environment as well as technologies. So yeah, the most optimistic scenario is when you know countries band together to collaborate on climate action and at the same time, we see that uh, clean energy investments are paying off. In the second scenario, we see countries band together but because of a protracted recovery from COVID-19, investments in clean energy has stalled and so technological advancements have plateaued. So that in that particular scenario, um, Singapore would have to rely more on electricity imports and um, still use natural gas, which is a fossil fuel, and offset any of the emissions from burning that fossil fuel with carbon credits. The last scenario is when the world remains very fragmented geopolitically, but at the same time, um, any investments that are made into clean energy pays off in the later parts of the decade. So in that particular scenario, we see different kinds of energy options in our energy mix, including the use of nuclear energy, um, as well as hydrogen, which is a technology that's still nascent. But under that scenario, we assume that technology will pay off closer towards 2050, helping us achieve our 2050 targets. And of course, the different scenarios are important um, because as we have seen recently in changes in the energy demand and uh, fluctuations in energy prices means the situation is very volatile. Nobody can say for sure what's going to happen uh, in the years ahead and, and in 2050. So by having different strategies available to Singapore, it allows us to stay nimble and to see whether we can pivot to different strategies if one door closes to us. And Audrey, one of those uh, three scenarios includes nuclear energy as a potential power source. Uh, it was once deemed unsuitable for use here. So why is it an option now? So nuclear technology has evolved uh, uh, in by leaps and bounds since the last report in 2012 when the Singapore government deemed nuclear technologies unsuitable. So we still, the report recommends that Singapore keeps a close watch on the various nuclear technologies, including nuclear fusion technology, which is supposed to be less uh, dangerous uh, and will kind of protect our country from nuclear fallout. But of course, even in that scenario uh, where the world remains fragmented and that means, you know, electricity imports won't be that available to us, Nuclear is expected only to, ex to take up a small fraction of Singapore's energy mix in 2050 at around 10%. Um, Singapore still hopes to rely on tapping solar power, geothermal energy, as well as ho hoping that hydrogen will eventually pay off as an option for us. So this uh, scenario is not set in stone yet. Singapore is still keeping a close watch on the various technologies available to us. Uh, but nuclear technology has changed over time. And... Um, Yes, so we just need to realise that nuclear technology then and now is not the same.